What is going on, y'all? It's your boy, Texas Yankee. Got a little bit different of a video. Uh, sorry, I've been gone again. I apologize. I keep doing that. But we're going to get back into it with a little bit more NBA content. Uh, the Round one of the draft was yesterday. Some surprising picks. Uh, some not so surprising. So let's get into it. It's going to be Bleacher Report's draft grades. Appreciate y'all for being here. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, of course. So we're Sachet going first overall we kind of expected this especially after alex Starr refused to do a workout with the Atlanta hawks so this doesn't really surprise anyone um giving it a b grade here i do agree with because i don't know who else like who else do you want to pick first overall um if you're atlanta a wing player makes perfect sense for them too uh he's like i think six nine or six seven so he's, he's a large do it all big wing um like it says right here and yeah, I think he can really thrive as a 3 and D type player, maybe uh, kind of fulfill like a Brandon Miller type role that we've seen recently. So I agree with the B, uh, especially with Alex Saar being kind of a perfect fit for the Wizards and him also wanting like, and expressing that he wanted to go there. I think that's just a good pickup for the Hawks with what is on the board and it not being super, a super, uh, I guess what should we say, like high caliber talent or super upside kind of draft. Um, the Wizards getting Alex Saar here, I think is perfect for them because they don't really have much they're building around right now. Obviously, Bilal Kulabali, I think, has come up pretty well and I think can continue to improve into a cornerstone player for them. This gives them a building block in the front court as well. And with trading away Denny Avdia, which I did think was a little bit weird, but I suppose makes sense, especially we'll get into that a little bit later with the return they get. Uh, this is a good pick for them, given a, I think, uh, Sar has one of the highest upsides in the draft uh, of all these players. I think there's a lot of good role players you can find in this draft. Reed Shepard at three, I do think, was a little high. Obviously, his shooting ability was insanity. Um, 52% from three, which is crazy. Uh, well, where is he going to fit in is kind of the question. With um, Houston's, you know, Almond Thompson's there, Jalen Green's there, Cam Whitmore. How are they going to go about kind of constructing – it's not even mentioning Fred Van Vliet. How are they going to go about constructing the rotation around there? Are they going to ship someone out? How much playing time is Reed Shepard going to get in the future? And I don't know. I mean, eventually I think you could even have Amon Thompson play kind of more of a wing position. So it is possible that this works out. A little bit interesting for me, but getting that shooting on the team is always going to be helpful. And he's going to be a guy that is undoubtedly – valued in the league whether it be with the rockets in the future or not so d plus i think it's a good grade there the spurs picking stefan castle out of yukon number four was a, not too surprising for me um as a spurs fan you know maybe i would like to get more of a true point guard but i think as he's expressed he is someone who is still an adept playmaker i mean he had to play shooting guard at yukon obviously but his jump shot is something that's a little bit concerning We'll see how that improves um, in the future if it can. But I think it really just comes down to whether he can make impact plays. Uh, and, yeah, we really just need that playmaker, like it says here, that ball handler who can set up our offense, who can set up a Wemby, uh, take some pressure off of him so that he's able to get to his spots and not have the defense smother him the entire time. If he can, yeah, build that jump shot a little bit, even a mid-range, um, and continue to be able to attack downhill, That'll be, in itself, just a big upgrade for the Spurs. Ron Holland at five, I did not see coming. Uh, yeah, here we go. The Whoa. Granted, yes, Ron Holland did want to up, uh, atop the draft class. It is still very surprising um, as he seems kind of raw and he did have a down year. But that is something we've seen with the G League Ignite players. So that going forward might be one of the – I mean, now that the G League Ignite is gone, this is one of the last uh, tests we'll actually get of that talent, right? So – you could say this might even be a prove it thing for whether the G League Ignite was a good idea or not. Uh, yes, he is only 18 years old, and it is interesting that they're just adding more raw youth. Um, I guess makes sense. Not necessarily the direction I think they should have went. I think they needed to get a more solidified building piece around Cade, but uh, going with the upside in the future, I guess, is, is something. Tijon Salon, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, out of France for the Hornets at pick number six. This one, yeah, upside train. This one is another kind of wild pick that we didn't see coming. This reminds me a lot of the Bilal Kulabali pick. I'm going to bring that up again. Obviously, he's a little bit bigger, but 
this seems like another one of those just get those foreign wings that have immense upside. They have length. They have that ability to stretch the floor and shoot and hope that they eventually become a really good 3D player and maybe they can add some other things to that. In Kulabali's case, he's added the ability to kind of ball hand a little bit, play make. I think in the case with Salon, he is a do-it-all player, but again, he isn't necessarily great at anything yet. But I think if he continues to grow even, I mean, if he gets to be like 6'10", 6'11", at power forward, man, he, he could be a problem, especially with his athleticism and length. Uh, this is, again, a really just upside raw potential pick. And, I mean, in a draft like this, that's not necessarily a bad thing to go with. But you can also, like for the Hornets, go with a more solidified player, such as Donovan Klingon right here uh, to the Portland Trailblazers. Of course, uh I'm not sure if I expected the Blazers to pick a center, but then when you think about it, I guess they really should just go best player available, right? I mean, they don't have too much of a direction. They did trade away Malcolm Brogdon for Denny Avdia, which I think is a great move for them. Free up some of that guard space. They already have Scoot Henderson, Simons, and Sharp, like it says here. And they add a, a wing to that roster. DeAndre and Robert Williams is definitely an interesting thing that we'll see what they do with those two to keep them or move one of them at least. Uh, Donovan Klingon, big, can be a big impact player. I do kind of feel bad that he went to Portland one Loki, but we'll see. Um, I think he projects to be a pretty good center in the league, not necessarily like a superstar, but very good role-playing center. And good pick for the Blazers, um, especially with who was on the board at this point. And then the Timberwolves, so this was a trade from the Spurs. And as a Spurs fan, I would have I would have Loki loved to have traded down here a few picks and maybe pick someone like Dalton Connect, but uh, that didn't happen or work out. So we end up trading the eighth overall pick and we picked Dillingham with that, but we traded him, basically the rights to him, to Minnesota. And we get, what was it? An unprotected first round pick in 2031 and a protected 2030 pick swap. Uh, so essentially one and a half picks, you could say. Uh, which I think is kind of a steep price to get Dillingham. Uh, maybe not. I think he's going to come off their bench too, which is interesting to me that they pay that much for someone who's probably going to come off their bench in the future. We'll see what ends up happening there. Uh, for the Spurs, I do like that we got, obviously, a fully unprotected pick and a pick swap. If it was just an unprotected pick, I think I wouldn't be too happy. Um because there was still a few players that I think the Spurs could have used in this draft. But, obviously, I'm not the GM, and they probably know better than me. So, we'll, we'll go with that. Zach Eady at number nine to the Grizzlies. Kind of surprising. They were trying to trade up for Klingon pretty much the whole time. So, it makes sense that they go and get the next center off the board with Zach Eady. Seven foot four. Uh, Going to fill a lot of holes for them. It is a C- minus they give here. Which makes sense. I mean, it is a talent reach, you know, somewhat. But this is a fit pick, obviously. I hate saying it's a pick for fit. You know what I mean? Uh, so they don't necessarily go best player available. We'll see how it translates into the game. Um, I don't necessarily think he's going to have as many problems as a lot of people keep saying. I do think he's going to have kind of like a... Who's that? Is it Valanciunas? I like a Vucevic with the Bulls type of player. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. And then Cody Williams here at the 10th pick. I'm not going to spend too much time. Probably out to the top 10. Uh, even this. They give him an A, which I do think is it's another good building block for the Utah Jazz. And they were missing kind of that downhill attacking wing player uh, just on their roster in general. I mean, they do have like Colin Sexton, but he's actually their guard. So I think between him, Keontae George, Laurie Markkinen, you know, Walker Kessler had a down slump, so you might have wanted them to add another true, like, front court player. But Cody Williams at the wing, I think, is a good pick for them. And we'll see how he turns out as well. Buzelis at 11, I think, is a good pick. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into it. Yeah, he was marked to go earlier. Had a down shooting year. We'll see how he fits around. He's kind of a do-it-all, versatile player. We'll see how he pans out. Um I don't know how much faith I have in his like superstar potential, obviously. I think his upside is a good role player as well, but we'll see what happens there. 
the Thunder take Nikola Topic, which I think was interesting. Uh, but the backup point guard is always good. So, you know, uh, they now have Caruso as well. So this is kind of a backup playmaker. Um, I did want to see them maybe take another front court player, but you know they have the means to go trade for that or do something else to acquire that as well. Sacramento Kings, Devin Carter, pretty good pick here. Uh, combo guard. I feel like this is kind of overlapping with Davy Hunt Mitchell, which is somewhat it uh, maybe not a problem if you're gonna move on from Davy Hunt, but interesting pick there. And A is uh, interesting. They said he's uh, gonna be pushing for a starting spot. I really liked Keon Ellis, not gonna lie, last year. But yeah, more versatile wing play and combo guard play. The six A is why I say a little bit of wing play because I don't know if he's gonna be playing point guard if De'Aaron Fox or if he's gonna be shooting guard. See what goes on there. Bob Carrington to the Wizards via the Blazers in the Athia trade. This is a great pick, I think, personally. Um, adding another versatile guard um, alongside Alex Starr. This is really gearing up their team uh, with a lot of youth. We'll see how they can kind of mesh together with him, Kulabali. See what they do with Kyle Kuzma, Alex Starr. B, I think, is a good grade, if not better there. Cleo Ware to Miami. C. Um, I can agree. I'm not necessarily sure that this is what they would have went with. Maybe you trade down and just go with a little bit more value. I don't think picking up at 15 was necessarily the right pickup. So it is going to build bolster their front court depth, obviously. That's their hope, but we'll see what happens there. Jared McCain, guard for the Sixers. Decent pickup. Overlaps a lot with Tyrese Maxey. So going to be kind of a interesting pick there. Another thing with Dalton Connect. Uh, but she goes right here to the Lakers. Great pick. Everyone's going to be like, oh, this is the best pick of the draft. It might be. We'll see. Um, I don't know if it is or not. But big forward who can uh, – or I guess big wing who can shoot that ball. It's going to be invaluable to the Lakers. He has 23. Uh, but I don't think that really matters too much. Orlando Magic take Tristan to Silva out of Colorado. He looked pretty good, honestly, in what I watched of him. A lot of teams are starting to pick these big 6'8 forwards that can – Pass as well, kind of that Jason Tatum archetype. So I think that's what they're going, trying to go with here. Toby Walter to the Toronto Raptors out of Baylor. Great pick here. Obviously, the Raptors pick at 19. They would like to be picking a lot higher, but they don't have that um, privilege because of the trades they made. So Toby Walter, uh, pretty decent shooter. I guess you could say, I mean, he hasn't necessarily proven it through the entire season. Um, but I think that is kind of a thing he can build on. His, his shot doesn't look bad, so it's something he can continue to build on in his athleticism. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying here. They're, they're not really saying a whole lot of good about here except his upside and his shot motion looks good. And that's, you know, if you're picking a 19 in this draft, you're not going to have a whole lot of value left. So mm-hmm. unfortunate, but Jalen Tyson at number 20 to the Cavaliers, a uh, forward position. This is great, man. They keep – needing a wing player. You know, they have Isaac Okoro kind of filling in that spot. But, again, he still can't shoot the ball that great. So, it's like, <clears throat> yes, they did need a wing. But what they really needed was someone that can take pressure off of the guards and do some more offensive things. He did average 19.6, but it's just the way that he scores, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, yeah, that defensive ability. If you could kind of combine him and Okoro, that would be amazing for them but they don't have that ability. So we'll see what happens going forward. Uh, Yves Misi um, to the Pelicans is great, man. This is a great spot to slide in next to Zion, 6'11". He can jump. This is going to be a dunk contest every time they're on the court. So great pickup there. Deron Holmes uh, to the Nuggets via the Suns. Um, Yeah. They say this is the best player Command's best player, backup, it's possible. But I think this is definitely a kind of projection pick as well. He looks like a stretch five kind of. Three, So we'll see if that's real, yeah. Um, that could be fantastic. And, I mean, we'll see how they utilize him if he's only as a backup to Jokic or if they have both of them on the floor. That's interesting. Uh, they give him a B. I agree with that as well. The Bucks get A.J. Johnson. Um, this was, yeah, something that was kind of interesting to me. They get this a D. 
He's only 167 pounds and 6'4", which is crazy. Um, comparison to Jamal Crawford. I really don't know much about this guy, to be honest. We'll see how he pans out. I can't even give him a grade, to be honest, man. I said this is a head scratcher. We'll see. We'll see. Kaishan George, the Wizards. Wizards just got a haul, man. And this was from the Knicks. Which I did think was interesting because the Knicks already had the 24th and 25th pick, and then we tw- traded for the 26th pick. So I was just like, why did we even do that? Couldn't we have just taken our guys and they got them? I guess, but whatever, man. Um, George, six foot seven, shooting guard. Yeah, just another young player. And you hope that one or two of these guys in the first round pan out for you if you're the Wizards, and you just pray for that upside, basically. The Knicks take Pacomi Dadier. Uh, forward from France, I'm assuming. I forget what they said during the actual draft. Um, he's a one-skill supplier. His burst is limited. Defense can be sloppy. Interesting. So he's a scorer, which is good. I mean, with Mikel and OG Anobi, a wing, pure scorer is nice, especially trading away Bullion. I do think DiVincenzo filled a lot of that role, though. Uh, Dylan Jones at 26 from OKC. Oh, no, we didn't get the 26 pick. Interesting. Anyway, Dylan Jones, um, 6'5 wing to the Thunder. Another decent pick up here, but again, I feel like they got to pick a big, right? Like, what are they doing? Terrence Shannon, uh, another wing goes off here to the Timberwolves. That's, that's probably a good pick up for them. He's a natural scorer. But he's not necessarily an a off-the-cap shooter, which is going to be weird beside like, Conley and Edwards. Um, Ryan Dunn, power forward out of Virginia. We like this pick. And they only give it a C plus, but they say his defense is the best in this class. So that that's why I like this pick, man. Uh, he can't shoot, so we'll see if he can kind of evolve into a playmaker and if he can figure out how to finish at the rim. If he can do that, I think he can provide value. If not, it's going to be tough. And then Isaiah Collier here uh, out of USC went way later than we thought, I think, um, to Utah Jazz. So another guard for them, kind of interesting. Um, they get to see it's a power point guard, blah, blah, blah. He's six foot. Yeah. Um, I guess that's probably why they went lower. You just can't do a whole lot outside of get to the rim. It seems like, um, yeah, it's kind of a dying archetype, man. And then by Baylor, killing me here. Baylor Shireman, I'm assuming out of Creighton. Um, decent pickup for the Celtics. I would have liked to see them pick a front court player. I mean, I feel like I've been saying that all day. Just I feel like not enough of them went off the board. He is a forward, but as a small forward, he's kind of just more like a shooter. Um, pretty, pretty good pickup, I think. Uh, getting a polished guy who can come in and contribute probably right away. So pretty good there. That's really all we have for the grades with Bleacher Report. Uh, let me know what you think about them. Obviously, focus them more in on the top, a few picks, but later ones are going to be kind of harder to judge until the season goes on. And even until we have a couple more years, you can't write these players off. So uh, let's get into some more stuff. And the last few things I'm just going to fit in here because I don't know. I don't want to make an old video for them. Uh, Mikel Bridges, big trade here to the Knicks, man. They only give up a second round pick, uh, the Nets, which is interesting that that's even included in there. Um, but for Bogdanovich, that contract basically matches up, which is really an indication, I think, that one one of these guys maybe got paid a little bit too much and the other got not enough money. And then four unprotected first-round picks every other year starting in 2025, which is a lot already. And then an unprotected pick swap in 28. That's kind of like four and a half picks. And then another um, just top four protected from the Bucks pick. So that if it's, it's not going to be top four. But if it was, it would convey to the next year. And a second-round pick in 25. Just a crazy swap here. And this is so much to give up, I think, for a, you know, for, for a player of Mikel Bridges' caliber. I do think he is a super impactful guy, and he's going to help the Knicks out a lot, you know. But I don't know if six first-round picks is worth it. I do like the going all-in for for him and obviously bringing back the Nova boys. It's going to be the, the big talking point. But this does really help solidify that Knicks roster. And this is a guy that plays a lot. Everyone's going to talk about, you know, he hasn't missed a game since, what, before high school or something. Uh, Thibodeau's going to love that. So this this definitely helps solidify that. I think the Knicks are still probably the second best team. But we'll see, man. They just got to find a way to beat the Celtics. And besides this, the Avdia trade happened as well for the draft. Um, and Malcolm Brogdon 
got flipped. So it was just Denny Avdia to the Portland Trailblazers for Brogdon. Carol Carrington, who got picked, uh, basically gave the rights for him. And then the first round pick from 2029, second most favorable from Portland. I guess that means they have uh, two picks there. And then two second round picks. I like this um, mostly for the Blazers. They get rid of Brogdon, who they don't really need. I don't love, like for the Wizards, I'm just like, why do you need Brogdon? Why do you need Carrington? You know, I do like picking up the picks for it. So we can see how it turns out in the future. It could be a good, good move for both of them. Um, but yeah, man, leave a comment, let us subscribe, and let me know what you think about the picks and trades, man.